Lastly, let's talk about Ember 3. James, can you walk us through this study design and findings of Ember 3? This study got a lot of buzz. It is uh, published in uh, New England Journal at the same time. Uh, in Luna Strand, it's an oral selective estrogen receptor degrader. Uh, so it's one of the third generation, if it has CNS penetration. So this trial looked at uh, this immune strength, monotherapy, and combined with abomacyclic for patients with hormone receptor positive, third to negative metastatic breast cancer. Uh, they are pre-treated with endocrine treatment. It's a, uh, a phase three trial. It's a fairly large study. It had three arm, immunostrin, 400 milligram as single agent, then standard of care end endocrine treatment with fulvestrin or exemestin as the second arm. The third arm is, that's the one which you know, they analyzed, that's the you know, immunostrin, 400 milligram daily plus barmosecular. And the primary endpoint is the PFS and second endpoints overall survival and PFS. Significant improvement in progression-free survival versus standard of care endocrine treatment in patients with ESR1 mutation. The hazard ratio is 0.62. But it did not reach a, uh, a statistical significance in overall population. So single agent immune trend is highly active, improvement in progression-free survival in, you know, in patients with ESR1 mutation. And all subset of patients benefited. Uh, and then you know, overall survival analysis are uh, immature and it's ongoing. The safety profile is fairly well tolerated, no new safety signal. The second conclusion is immunostrin plus abomacyclin. So significantly improved progression for survival versus immunostrin as a single agent uh, in all patients, not just ESR1 mutated, all patients, the hazard ratio of 0.57. That's a pretty impressive hazard ratio. And, and that doesn't matter if it's ESR1 mutated. And then the PFS is about 9.4 months. And all subset of patients are benefited. So, so the conclusion is immunostrin strength and, uh, as a single agent in ESR1 mutated patients or combined with abomacyclib in all in patients is a potential treatment options after progression on endocrine treatment in patients with positive, a HER2 negative and advanced breast cancer. We do have oral CERD available by itself, which is l assessment, but we don't have that data as a combination. So we await for all these combination trials. Right, right, right. The other thing I want to bring up is the control arm. We know that these patients on the current standard of care endocrine therapy don't do well. And that's the reason for us to look for these strategies of combination. But Jay, most of our patients today are exposed to abemocyclib, either in first line in metastatic space or in adjuvant settings based on monarchy study. If this was to become available, where do you see yourself using this combination? <laughs> so I know the metastatic ER positive space is really, I don't know what's the right term, when all patients have more options, let's just say. Absolutely, that, yes, yes. And, and uh, so I think I think that's probably the right way of approaching. So um, let's just say, I know Halbon seen put like a Fairly complicated chart on that. <laughs> so, and uh, when you see a patient you know, who has an ESR1 mutation, so now we have an option. If, if it's available, yes. It's yep, in yep, the yep. guidelines. Yep. We have an op option of using this versus the last trend. Indeed, the space of oral surge is getting crowded as we already have a single agent approved in the setting, which is LSSRAND, as you mentioned, Rahul. And many more of these combinations are being studied, uh, as you alluded to, James. We'll see how it all pans out and, importantly, how this changes our current landscape and future. Well, James, thank you so much for taking the time to cover some of the key studies from Hormone Receptor Positive Breast Cancer Space from San Antonio Breast Cancer Symposium 2024. For our listeners, let us go over a quick recap.
In today's discussion, we had a chance to focus on four key studies from hormone receptor positive breast cancer disease from San Antonio Breast Cancer Symposium 2024. This included Europa study, where we are seeing that radiation was better tolerated over five years of endocrine therapy. We need long-term data to select the right patients in which we can let go of endocrine therapy and radiation therapy would be rather good enough. Then we touched on Taylor X study, which reported benefit with anthracycline-based chemotherapy in patients with recurrent score of 31 and above. We also had a chance to touch on Padma study, which continues to reinforce our current practice of endocrine therapy with CDK4-6 inhibitors over chemotherapy in all comers, including visceral disease in first-line settings. Then before closing, we talked about AMBER-3 and the data on oral SIRDs in combination with epamacyclib that looks promising in all comers, regardless of ESR1 mutation. Thank you for joining us. Make sure to check out our other conference highlights from ASH 2024 and SAPCS 2024. We are the Oncology Brothers.